All right, all right, all right. Let's go back here to the slideshow. Okay, same thing here, sharing the screen, PowerPoint. Okay, so that was the point we stopped. Make sure you really understood the combination of the atomic orbitals to form the molecular orbitals and to get the bands. If you did not stop, go back, make sure you understand, and then move on. And so that's what we did in the paper. So I started with two with two atoms of lithium, then moved to four, six, eight, then eleven, then sorry, twelve and n. Okay. Remember that each atom of lithium has one electron in the valence shell. Therefore, the combination of two atoms of lithium will have a, a total of two electrons. So if we combine two atomic orbitals, we must produce or generate two molecular orbitals. And one thing I would like you to understand here is how much or how many molecular orbitals have electrons and how many are empty in the case of the lithium-2 compound. Well, we know that each molecular orbital can hold two electrons. Therefore, we have the low energy molecular orbital completely filled and the top one completely empty. Okay, so just one filled and one empty. So let's keep that in mind. So now let's move to the combination of four atoms of lithium. Again, each lithium has one valence electron. Therefore, the system has a total of four electrons. Okay, four atomic orbitals combining, we have four molecular orbitals. Each molecular orbital can hold two electrons. We have four, therefore two molecular orbitals are completely full and two molecular orbitals are completely empty. So with that, let's stop a little bit. Let's go back to the first case. We had here one full, one empty, two full, two empty. Now let's see with six atoms of lithium combining. We have six atomic orbitals that will produce six molecular orbitals and six electrons to distribute across the orbitals. Each orbital can hold two. We have two, four, six electrons in the three first orbitals and three empty orbitals. Let's compare that with the previous cases. So for the first one, one full, one empty. Second case, two full, and two empty, third case, three full and three empty. Can you see that there is a trend here and we always have half of the orbitals full and half of the orbitals empty? Can you see that? Did you see that? Let's see if that's true for the combination of eight atoms of lithium that have a total of eight electrons. So 
So we are going to generate eight molecular orbitals. Now we have the first four orbitals full and the top four empty. So the trend continues here. Half of the orbitals are full and half is empty. Weight 10 is the same thing, half full, half empty, and then 12, the same thing, half full and half empty. Another thing that I would like to highlight here, see that more orbitals we add, smaller the gap between the orbitals, there will be a point that we have so many orbitals that the gap is so small, so small, that we call this kind of state here as a quasi-continuum. And that's represented as a band, okay? So a band is a result of the combination of n atomic orbitals in the solid state material, okay? So inside the band, we have all the molecular orbitals stacked here, and they are, the gap between the orbitals is virtually uh, zero. And that's how we are going to represent the molecular orbital for a solid state compound. Okay, make sure you understood that. <clears throat> and let's move on. Okay, now I would like to introduce you two different concepts. So the first one, we are going to take a look back at the lithium uh, band. So this band was formed by the combination of S atomic orbitals. Therefore, the name of the band is S band. And we uh, saw together that half of the band is filled with electrons and the other half is uh, completely empty, okay? So I'm represented here, uh, representing here uh, the part of the band that's filled by this red dashed uh, box here. And the half that's empty by just, um, uh, blank space. <clears throat> See that there is a point here or there is a energy level here that's the max energy level that's filled with electrons. So when we have a band, this point is called Fermi level. And the definition is that it is the energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital in a solid at zero Kelvin. Okay, attention with that. Okay. Zero Kelvin. Okay. Fermi level is the energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital in a solid at zero K. <clears throat> the second concept that I would like to introduce you is the energy between two different bands. So for example, here 
we have S band with uh, lower energy and P band with higher energy. And there is a gap between the two bands. So the energy difference between two bands is called band gap. Again, the energy difference between two bands is called band gap. <clears throat> okay, we went through all this trouble to understand the chemical structure of a solid uh, material. Okay, so now, now let's use all this knowledge to uh, provide a better explanation why some materials have low resistance and why other materials have uh, high resistance to the passage or to the movement of electrons. So let's go back to our circuit. So I'm just going to write here the bottom part of the circuit. Remember that the connection between this point and this point over here is made by a material in the solid state and the electron is flowing from the negative pole towards the positive pole of the generator. So to reach the positive pole, it has to go through the solid state material, okay? The only way for the electrons to move through the solid is through the, through the band of the material. Okay. So let's take a chemical look at the structure of the material. So we know that the combination of the atomic orbitals will form the D band of this material. Let's start looking at the lithium, for example. So we know that this here is the S band. And we also know that the band is half filled and half empty. <clears throat> and let's think together at this point. Once the electron reaches the uh, intersection between the circuit and the solid, it must go through the solid. It has to move through the solid to reach the other point of the circuit. So let's think together. Let's think about uh, what's happening here. For the electron to move from this point to this point, it must not have anything in front of it, okay? It has to have a free uh, way to do it. So think about you, um, think by yourself, look at the structure of the material, of this material, and the question for you is, with this material, with this material over here, is it possible for the electron to move through it or not?
Okay, so the question is, if we have this kind of material, is it possible for the electron to move from this point all the way to the other point? Well, take a look, look at the structure. We see here that half of the band is filled, but the other half is completely empty. So that means the electrons see a free way to move through the material, okay? So therefore, it can successfully get to the other side. Thus, there is low resistance to the passage of electrons, and this kind of compound has high conductivity or if you prefer, low resistance to the movement of electrons. Okay. One analogy that you can make is that if you go to a empty party and your goal is to go from the entrance as fast as possible to the bar, and you see this sort of scenario, there is basically nothing holding you back and you can go from the door all the way to the bar without any sort of resistance, okay? So that happens in a material with high conductivity. A lot of space here in the band for the movement of the electron. <clears throat> now let's see a second case. So now let's take a look at the material and look at that, oh my God. The band is completely full. So again, the question for you is, in this kind of material, is it possible for the electron to move from this point to this point? Let's think about that. You don't need to answer me right now. Okay, so the question for you was, in this kind of material, is it possible for the electron to go from this side to the other side? So let's uh, think together. So the electron will get to this point. The band is completely full. So it's really, really hard to get to the other point. So it's very, very unlikely that the electron will go to the other side. So this kind of material is a material that has low conductivity, or if you prefer, high resistivity to the passage of electrons. And the example that you can use is the complete, complete opposite 
of this sort of party on your left side. So now let's uh, go to a very, very crowded party. And once you get to the door here, your goal is to reach the bar on the other side. So see that this place is completely packed. So it will require a lot of energy and time to go through all these people here and get to the bar, okay? So a lot of resistance to move through the, the material. Therefore, uh, this kind of material has low conductivity. Okay, so I hope you understood all the way to this point. So I have one more slide to show you and then we can finish uh, the lecture for today. Okay, so now I would like you to take a look at three materials that I'm showing here, the band structure, and classify them as conductors or insulators. So let's think about that for a couple minutes and then let's answer together. Right, all right, all right. So you had time to think about that for a little bit. So let's uh, think together now and let's classify, oops, classify these materials as uh, uh, conductors or insulators, okay? So let's get to the first example here on your far uh, right side. So this particular material has a completely full S band and a completely empty P band that overlaps with the S band, okay? So once the electron reaches this material, is there any empty band or empty space that the electron can move freely? So in this case, the answer is yes, because there is an overlap between an empty P-band here. So the electrons can move through the empty band and get to the other side, okay? So therefore, this first one is a conductor. <clears throat> Second example we just saw, and it's the case of the lithium band half field, half empty, therefore electrons can freely move through the empty band, empty part of the band, so it's a free way for the movement of the electrons, therefore these two materials are uh, conductors, okay? Now let's take a look at the third example. 
So lower energy band completely filled and higher energy band completely empty. The electron will reach the material. This band here is completely full. However, we have the higher energy band empty, but look at the energy gap between the lower energy and the higher energy bands. Okay, the gap is really, really high. So very unlikely for the electron to be promoted to the empty band and then have a free way to move through the material. Therefore, this is an insulator. What about if we have something like that? Completely full lower energy band, completely empty higher energy band. However, the gap is smaller than the first case, but higher than the second case. Is this material a conductor or an insulator? Well, this kind of material is an intermediate between conductor and insulator that's called semiconductor. Okay. So we can rationalize conductors, semiconductors, and insulator as a function of the band gap of the material. Conductors have a very small or zero band gap. Semiconductors have an intermediate value of uh, the energy or the band gap. And insulators have a very high uh, band gap energy. Okay. At this point, I think uh, we can stop here. So I hope you understood. And on Friday, we will talk about the effect of the temperature in the conductivity for conductors and semiconductors. And start to talk a little bit more about semiconductor. Okay, so we will stop over at this point and I will see you again on Friday. Okay, thank you very much and I see you.